Being a couple in Swaziland um, gives you an interesting uh, perspective. Um, not only in the volunteer, volunteer experience, um, having somebody at the end of the day who you can just go home and relax and be an American with and you know hang out with and goof around, um, but also it gives an interesting perspective into Swazi culture, um, seeing the way that uh, the gender inequality plays out in relationships. Um, and it also affords you a certain set, sort of status. Um, I'm not a I'm not a booty. I'm a babe, <laughs> and uh, so yeah, I think a little bit of a little bit of a different responsibility is expected of you. Um, but yeah, it it just it it's a whole new dynamic. I'm uh, exploring Swazi culture. Yeah, I completely agree. It is very different. We, during training, I mean, we were together 24-7, and that was way different from before coming from, we both worked separate jobs um, and really intense uh, jobs, so we were apart, and we saw each other at dinner time and night, and then you wake up and you go, and so it is different, but I think for the most part, it's been really positive, and we've been able to learn a lot about each other and adapt, and you know, the bottom line is if you feel like it's just too much time with one person, which you will feel as a married couple. You just have to go like, and do your own thing and then come together and, you know, like Ryan and I have projects where we work completely together and we have projects where we are separate and that's been really helpful. So like you still are an individual and you have your own, um, I guess, you have your own ideas of what you want to get out of this experience and then you come together and then you can share that and so. My advice to incoming couples, um, and this is just general advice, but find like find a place that you can really that you can feel alone and that you can do your own thing. Like for example, I have a hammock um, that is strung up behind my house, <laughs> completely away from everybody. I and I spend every day after school, I have an hour of hammock time, where I just lay in my hammock and I either like read a book or listen to music and it's just my time where I don't have to deal with anybody or deal with anything and it's just and then I can recharge and you know. I think as a couple you have the opportunity to be a really great example to Swazis about um, gender equality and how we view it in the states and that's been really great like you know you were taught these gender rules of like a wife does this, a male or a husband does this, and then when the like the Swazi community, your community sees you, kind of change those, and like Ryan does the laundry, and I'll you know sweep, and Ryan you know because normally it's the women do the chores and the men work, but here it's really it's really interesting to show people and be that example um, for the Swazis, which is a part of our job, and so. For volunteers closer to my age coming in to join a group that is majority or 20-somethings, uh, I have to say that only encouraging words about that experience. You probably knew coming in that you would be one of the older members of the group that you're with. And it's nothing but a wonderful thing as far as I'm concerned. There have been moments of challenge where I thought I was either getting much older or much younger hanging around with the kids. Uh, but they keep you young. Uh, if you're young at heart, you have to pace yourself, there's no doubt about it. You have to be careful. It's not a competition. You're not trying to prove yourself to anybody, which is nice about being over 60. Everybody is going to miss uh, people from home, family and friends. In, in my age bracket, there are grandchildren, precious grandchildren to miss. But what is got me through that uh, bit of sadness is the wonderful people here. Uh, the volunteers are the same age as my daughter at home and so now I have sort of an extended family of daughters and sons. Uh, the grandchildren have evolved because of the wonderful little children in my neighborhood. Uh, the staff's children. I have more young children around me and uh, new sons and daughters every day. My family has just grown and grown and grown and it's been very rewarding and very satisfying and has kept me from feeling I've hardly ever felt sad. No 
Nolia kuchi choka mama. The cultural transition of coming from America and being a black woman in Africa has presented its challenges. Um, initially, coming here, I expected that there would be some some issues with being black in Africa, but being black American in Africa has has its issues, um, mostly because a lot of Swazis don't realize that there are non-famous black Americans that work nine to five and have their typical lives in America. They mostly see the images that of musicians or famous people or our president, Barack Obama. So coming here and being the black American that came from a nine to five job and having to explain that yes, we do exist in, in America and yes, we do live normal lives was difficult at first. But now I use it as a, a learning tool just to educate them on, you know, that we do exist. And if you were to go to America, it's so diverse that you really can't say that Americans are just white. No, they're black, white, Asian. It just, it's a multicultural place. Um, some of the coping strategies that I use would be, you know, education. I'm working in a primary school, so during Black History Month, I talk to my children about the theme, the different, the black, black people in America who helped our people become, to gain their civil rights, to become, to go, to, to be able to go to a university, and just to teach them that, you know, there are people in history that have shaped our futures, whether you're a black American or whether you live in Africa, those people throughout history have influenced us in so many ways. So I use the fact that I work in the school as a means to just show them the positive influences of a black American. Sure. Um, challenges being an Asian American in Swaziland. Um, one of the biggest things is uh, disbelief that I'm American. You know, almost 100% of the time they'll say, oh, umumu, which means white person. But then they'll follow that up with, oh, you're from China or Japan. And I'm always like, no, you know, very politely, no, actually I'm from America. And, and that's, you know, met with disbelief um, or, or they, they, they'll, they'll just repeat it again. No, you're from Japan. I'm like, no, I'm not. Uh, and I take that as a, as a learning experience and a, a cross-cultural experience, but it, it can be difficult, um, especially if you're having a bad day or if it's, you know, you say it to one person and his buddy who's standing right next to him then asks you the same question and you're like, I didn't change. Yeah. Incidences um, involving being an, a being an Asian American here in Swaziland run the full range from, you know, I don't even care, or I find it humorous, to like, I'm pretty angry. Um, what I do with that usually is try to make a learning experience out of it. I mean, that's what we're here for. Um, and not only for the Swazis, but also for myself. Um, it helps me to understand where they're coming from as well. Dealing with uh, being female in Swaziland, I would say you have to really tread carefully because you know we come from a society where you know as women we expect to have certain rights, and in Swaziland that is not the case. So when you are dealing with these situations, so you have to deal with them culturally. You can still uh, affirm yourself and you know point something out again how you deal with the situation is very important because then you can offend people but at the same time you want to be respected and want to be treated fairly so how you approach the situation you have to uh, take that into consideration so the marriage proposals you can they propose to me everywhere I go so when I'm on the bus I get a proposal, when I'm in town I get proposed to, when I'm in my community waiting at the bus stop they will propose to me. 
it doesn't happen as much anymore in my community because they know me now um, and I've already said no uh, but usually it's just a joke it's just they use it as flattery to, uh, to say oh you're a beautiful woman it's just something that they do usually it's not serious it's just a culture thing all right so in Swaziland expect if you are female that you are going to get marriage proposals wherever you go. So if you are new in the community, you're walking around, you're going to get a marriage proposal at some point or another. Several. Um, the way I deal with it is, you know, if they ask, depending on who the person is, I'll say either I'm married, uh, you know, or I'll joke around and I'll say, okay, how many cows? Because here, uh, they, for the marriage proposals, they have the whole lobola where the family pays you know for the girl and cow pretty much and so like I will joke around and say okay how many cows and so we will negotiate and have a laugh and then walk away from that and, yeah. yeah joking is very easy to do um, I personally wear a wedding band to get them away and if that doesn't work then I say well I need to be head of the household <laughs> and no cleaning or cooking yeah. um, <laughs> and that usually is like <laughs> a dead stare. That usually gets in the way well. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, being here you have to take it very lightly. Um, you have to take the culture as an American and, and the whole woman rights and all that. You have to use it in a very joking manner and play with it and that's how you will survive <coughs> because they can get very aggressive. There's, there can be touching, there can be um, grabbing. Like It can be very aggressive and to play it as lightly as possible is usually the best solution. Um, gender empowerment in this country is, is, a, is an issue because women are scared to do the things that men are supposed to do and men won't do the things that women are supposed to do. Um, so I think that's part of our job here is to show that a woman can play soccer and a man can cook dinner um, or whatever women do. Uh, so it's important for us to be the examples of that for them. I mean, Swaziland obviously has the highest statistic of HIV in the world, and so, and the catalyst and the cause for the majority of these problems is gender inequality. So, female empowerment is very, very critical in this country. And um, so, for you guys coming to Swaziland, keep that in mind and, you know, read, a, read up about it and be ready to empower young girls because it will be very critical to the, to the success of this country and to find a solution for all these sexual diseases.